Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on the Critical Care Pain Observation Tool, CPOT. Introduction Pain is defined as an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage, according to IASP in the year 2020. Pain is prevalent amongst ICU patients. 40 to 70% experience moderate to severe pain, 30% experience pain at rest, 50% experience pain during various nursing interventions, and up to 71% experience untreated pain. Types of pain in critically ill patients includes persistent pain associated with invasive procedures or discomfort, acute pain related to an ongoing disease, intermittent pain associated with ICU procedures, and chronic pain occurring before ICU admission. Consequences of pain Physiological consequences Severe pain produces a neurohumoral response with activation of the sympathetic nervous system and release of catecholamines. For CVS effects, these include tachycardia, hypertension, increased myocardial oxygen demand, myocardial ischemia, vasoconstriction with increased peripheral vascular resistance and impaired peripheral perfusion, reduced mobility, venous stasis and increased clotting results in venous thrombosis. Respiratory effects include diaphragmatic splinting from pain, decreased lung volume, atelectasis, decreased cough, sputum retention, infection, and hypoxia. Gastrointestinal effects include ileus and delayed gastric emptying, Urinary retention may occur. Metabolic effects. There is increased secretion of cortisol, glucagon, growth hormone, vasopressin, aldosterone, renin, angiotensin, catecholamines, etc., and reduced secretion of insulin and testosterone. The combined effects of these endocrine changes include hyperglycemia, lipolysis, proteolysis, hypermetabolism, and a catabolic state. Impairment of wound healing and immune function, sodium and water retention, increased fibrinogen and platelet activation, etc. There is decreased immunity, NK cell activity is reduced, there is reduced cytotoxic T lymphocyte count, there is reduction in phagocytosis by neutrophils, there is increased infection and impaired wound healing. Psychological effects of pain include patient suffering and distress, depression, anxiety, fear, fatigue, sleep-related problems, recollection of painful experiences during ICU treatment, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Uncontrolled pain contributes to the development of chronic pain. There is increased post-operative morbidity and increased length of hospital stay. Many patients treated in ICUs are unable to self-report pain due to various factors and tools to identify pain in these patients are required for effective pain management. Treatment of pain is associated with many benefits, such as fewer days on mechanical ventilation, reduction in infection, increased patient satisfaction, and avoidance of the above-mentioned consequences of pain. Routine monitoring of pain in ICU patients is recommended by the Society of Intensive Care Medicine. According to the PADIS SCCM guidelines 2018, Upon analysis of 12 behavioral pain assessment tools, the following have the greatest validity and reliability for assessing pain in critically ill adults unable to self-report pain. Critical Care Pain Observation Tool, CPOT, Behavioral Pain Scale in Intubated Patients, BPS, and Behavioral Pain Scale in Non-Intubated Patients, BPS and I. The CPOT is an innovative pain assessment tool that is based on two preliminary studies with expert-selected variables, prior research of behavioral indicators for pain, and vigorously compared scores at varying levels of consciousness. It is created by Celine Jelinas. CPOT is indicated to assess intubated or sedated patients' pain based on facial expressions, muscle tension, movement, and compliance with ventilated breaths for intubated patients, or vocalized pain for non-intubated patients. CPOT rates critically ill patients' pain based on clinical observations and is designed to scale the pain of patients 
or are unable to report it themselves through objective findings. CPOT has good inter-rater reliability in multiple studies and high sensitivity when patients are in pain. However, CPOT does not measure the severity of pain, only its presence or absence. CPOT scoring and subsequent management The formula for CPOT score is based on addition of the selected points as mentioned below. There are four aspects that are scored. Facial expression, body movements, whether the patient is intubated or not. For intubated patients, compliance with ventilator. For extubated patients, vocalization of pain. And muscle tension. For facial expression, there are three criteria. The relaxed or neutral criteria is given a score of zero. The patient has no muscular tension observed. The criteria of tense is given a score of one. The patient has frowning, brow lowering, and orbit tightening. For the criteria of grimacing, a score of two is assigned. There is presence of all of the above facial movements plus eyelids tightly closed. Facial expression is the best behavioral indicator for pain assessment in CPOT. For body movements, the criteria of absence of movement is assigned a score of zero. The patient does not move at all. However, this does not necessarily mean absence of pain. For a criteria of protection, a score of one is assigned. There is slow cautious movements, touching or rubbing the pain site, or seeking attention through movements. For criteria of restlessness, a score of two is assigned. The patient may be pulling tubes, attempting to sit up, moving limbs, trashing limbs, not following commands, striking at staff, or trying to climb out of the bed. Body movements are less specific in relation to pain. In patients with endotracheal intubation, compliance with ventilator is assessed. The criteria of tolerating ventilator or movement is assigned a score of zero. Ventilator alarms are not activated, there is easy ventilation. A criteria of coughing but tolerating is assigned a score of 1. Alarms stop spontaneously. The criteria of fighting ventilator is assigned a score of 2. There is patient ventilator asynchrony with blocking of ventilation and frequent alarms. For extubated patients, vocalization of pain is assessed. If the patient is talking in a normal tone or has no sound, the patient is assigned a score of 0. If the patient is sighing or moaning, the patient is assigned a score of 1. If the patient is crying out or sobbing, a score of 2 is assigned. Muscle tension is evaluated by performing a passive flexion and extension of the patient's arm when the patient is at rest. A score of 0 is assigned to the criteria relaxed. There is no resistance to passive movements. Regarding criteria of tense and rigid, a score of 1 is assigned there is resistance to passive movements. For criteria very tense or rigid, a score of 2 is assigned. There is strong resistance to passive movements and inability to complete them. Muscle tension is the second best behavioral indicator for pain assessment in CPOT. Directives. The patient must have intact motor function and no brain injury which could affect the consciousness. CPOT is performed when obtaining a baseline CPOT score, observe the patient at rest for one minute to obtain a baseline CPOT score. CPOT scoring is also performed during painful procedures and before and at peak effect of analgesics to assess analgesic effectiveness. The final rating is the highest CPOT score during the observation period. Muscle tension should be the last component assessed when the patient is at rest as touch stimulation alone may lead to behavioral reactions. A CPOT score of more than 2 indicates an unacceptable level of pain. Subsequent management. For patients with a CPOT score of less than 2, there is likely minimal to no pain present. Consider re-evaluation in the future. For patients with a CPOT score of more than 2, there is an unacceptable level of pain. Consider further or alternative analgesia and sedation. Regular re-evaluation is crucial in appropriate pain management. 
evidence base for CPOT. CPOT was designed to assess the pain of critically ill patients who are incapable of reporting their pain. However, the gold standard of pain assessment in patients is patient self-reported pain. Among critically ill adults who are able to self-report pain, the 0 to 10 numeric rating scale administered either verbally or visually is valid. Regarding the original study in the development of CPOT by Jelinas in 2006, Study Methods CPOT was created from retrospective reviews of common pain characteristics and vetted by ICU nurses and physicians. Elements of the CPOT were developed from a chart review on 52 critically ill patients and focus groups of nurses and physicians. The relevance of the inclusion criteria were validated with 4 physicians and 13 critical care nurses via a Likert scale. Physiologic measures were not included in CPOT as vital signs were not valid indicators for pain in the critically ill. Only cardiac patients who were relatively healthy were included in the study. 105 patients were included in the cohort with a mean age of 60 years old. Male patients consist of 79%. Type of cardiac surgery underwent includes coronary artery bypass graft 79%, valvular repair or replacement 10%, coronary artery bypass graft and valvular surgery 9%, interauricular or interventricular communication repair 2%. All patients had sternal incisions. Patients excluded includes patients who had heart transplant, thoracic aortic aneurysm repair, medications for chronic pain, ejection fraction of less than 25%, patients with psychiatric illness or neurologic problems, patients dependent on alcohol or drug use, patients who received neuromuscular blockers, and patients who have surgical complications such as hemorrhage or delirium. Each of the 105 patients were tested three times during three periods for a total of nine assessments. The CPOT scoring method has been discussed in a previous section. Each of the three tests were performed one minute before, during, and one minute after a positioning procedure. Tests 1 to 3 were performed while the patient was intubated and unconscious. Tests 4 to 6 were performed 3 hours later while the patient was intubated but conscious. And tests 7 to 9 were performed after extubation. Only two data collectors performed the analysis and one evaluation only included 33 patients out of 105. Important findings Amongst unconscious intubated patients, the mean CPOT was 0.55 one minute before positioning, 2.7 during positioning, and 0.67 one minute after positioning. For conscious intubated patients, the mean CPOT one minute before positioning was 1.21, 3.38 during positioning and 1.35 one minute after positioning. For conscious extubated patients, the mean CPOT one minute before positioning was 0.69. It is 2.79 during positioning and 0.87 one minute after positioning. Inter-rater reliability were high with a kappa of 0.6 to 0.88 for all testing periods except for test 4, which has a kappa of 0.52. The increase in CPOT scores was statistically significant during positioning when compared to before positioning in all three testing phases. With intubated patients during the second testing period, CPOT scores differed between those who reported pain and those who did not. During the final testing period, CPOT scores correlated with reported pain intensity scores. CPOT scores were higher when conscious and intubated than when unconscious or extubated. This could be due to endotracheal tube discomfort or positive pressure causing sternal incision site pain. CPOT scores were similar for unconscious and conscious extubated patients. This could be due to lingering anesthesia or pain resolution from extubation. Further studies Multiple studies 
have validated the CPOT score in multiple surgical, trauma, and medical ICU settings. However, studies involving brain-injured patients using CPOT or BPS were small. Jelinas et al. performed a post hoc analysis of CPOT in 2009 using the same study sample. Patients were evaluated while conscious and intubated and extubated. For each of these two testing periods, patients were evaluated using CPOT at rest during a nociceptive procedure, which is turning, and 20 minutes after the procedure. The patients were also evaluated using patients' self reports of pain. A cutoff CPOT score of more than 2 was established for nociceptive exposure. CPOT before the nociceptive procedure had a sensitivity of 47% and specificity of 83%. CPOT during the nociceptive procedure had a sensitivity of 86% and specificity of 78%, positive likelihood ratio of 3.87 and negative likelihood ratio of 0.18. CPOT score after the nociceptive procedure had a sensitivity of 63% and specificity of 97%. CPOT was concluded to be a useful tool to detect pain in intubated post-operative ICU adults, especially during a nociceptive procedure. A 2010 nursing evaluation study by Jalinas et al. found that 72.7% of the respondents would recommend the CPOT for routine use and 78% found it easy to use. The use of the CPOT can be easily taught to ICU nurses with educational material, including videotapes. The CPOT had a positive influence on ICU nurses' practice, with more frequent reports of pain assessments and reassessments in the medical files post-implementation of the tool. A decrease in the use of sedative agents were observed with the use of CPOT. A 2011 study in Spain by Vaquez found an average CPOT prior to, during and after positioning of 0.27, 1.93 and 0.10 respectively, with a kappa of 0.79. In 2014, a study by Butters et al. found significant associations between the CPOT and the FLACC score and the pain intensity numeric rating scale. A 2014 study by Echegare et al. in a neurosurgical intensive care unit demonstrated significantly higher scores for those patients who reported pain during positioning. AUC analysis showed good discrimination. A 2014 study by Rickenberg et al. compared the CPOT to the behavior pain scale. Intra-class correlation coefficient was found to be 0.6 to 0.81. During non-painful events, the BPS had significant increase while the CPOT did not. This study showed that the BPS and the CPOT are reliable and valid for use in a daily clinical setting. Although both scores increased with a presumed painful stimulus, the discriminant validation of the BPS use was less supported because it increased during a non-painful stimulus. The CPOT thus appears preferable in this particular group of patients especially with regards to its discriminant validation. These are my references. Thank you.